All right, everybody, I want to make a little video real quick just about Sokotoa and then some of the applications because we got a little cut short for time in class. And so Sokotoa is just a, a way to remember the fact that sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. There's your SOH in there. Um, the Ka for cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the um, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so depending if you have different letters, variables, numbers, it's always going to have this, this ratio. And so if you look at this um, particular picture to my left, when you talk about sine of theta, well, the opposite relative to the theta in the picture, the opposite is, is V and the hypotenuse is R. And uh, same thing when you talk about cosine. The adjacent is that U, and the hypotenuse is, is R. And again, the tangent of theta is, is V opposite over adjacent. So it doesn't matter what variables you're using or, or numbers. Uh, once you have kind of a piece of the puzzle fit in, they're always gonna fill these, these ratios. And the other thing I talked about in class is if you have uh, the other the other three, you know, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and then cotangent is the reciprocal of uh, tangent. And so many times you're going to have to kind of either evaluate a, a triangle or a theta or a position and find all six trig functions. That would be these. All right, I want to jump in and, and, and kind of explore some of the applications of this real quick. And so um, I'm going to start by looking at uh, number one, kind of got cut short in class, and this is on page 21. And it says, write the exact values of the six trig functions whose angle theta passes through the given point. So angle theta uh, passes through. And then um, for number one, the point is four negative three. And so when we sketch this, here's my x-axis and four negative three would be a point right here. And when you have this terminal side that passes through there, it's kind of de defining an angle, which is a slightly different thing. But if you put a uh, triangle in here, or you think about the reference angle, you know, then the idea is we can create this triangle, this right triangle specifically. And because we were given a point four three, we actually have a couple of these side lengths. And so like this, this side up here is, is four units. And then when we went down three, this side would be three units. But um, the, the only difference about this application is because we're in you know what's called the fourth quadrant, um, and we went down three, you know, there's a couple ways to, to do it we have to consider this kind of a, a negative. And it's just telling us the position of it. Um, we have two side lengths. And the, the reference angle, which is this you know purple angle in here, we're gonna have to find the six trig functions of that angle. You know, and we can we can label it with color, we can call that angle theta, all sorts of things. And so um, first thing we need is we need the third side. And that would be the hypotenuse. And so if I if I wanted this third side, I'll put H for hypotenuse. Remember that it's the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm gonna go through this quick, and if I'm going too quick, you can pause it and kind of look at the steps. But what I have is 25 equals H squared. And if I take the square root, uh, of both sides, I get h equals 5. And so that hypotenuse is 5. And you might have noticed there's actually a triangle called a 3, 4, 5 triangle. The ratio is kind of nice there. But um, the hypotenuse is 5. 
And so if I zoom in on that triangle, what I really have is something that looks like this. And so the setup is takes, takes you know probably longer than the actual work for the question. It wants us to um, find the, the six trig functions. So we want sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, we want uh, you know cosecant of theta, uh, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. And the reference angle or the theta or the thing we're asking about is this this theta in here. And so when we talk about, uh, I'll try to use some colors. When we talk about so, opposite over hypotenuse, the opposite here is negative three, right? Opposite of the theta. And the hypotenuse is positive five. That's the answer for sine of theta. And so um, it depends on how you do it. You could do, you know, the Sokotoa first. And, um, or you could say, well, he told me in class, Mr. Smith told me that cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So I'm just going to flip those numbers. Cosine is ka, which is adjacent. All right, that's adjacent. That's hypotenuse. We got four over five, which would make this guy, da 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 da, you guessed it, five over four. Just flip it. And then tangent is um, opposite over adjacent. You know, we got toa. So again, relative to, to theta, the opposite is negative three, and the adjacent is four. And so um, if I flip that, we'd have four over negative three. So this is the answer to you know that question. Those are the six trig functions that that um, correspond with this point on the coordinate axis. All right, I'm gonna do uh, one more that's kind of a little bit different, but you'll see kind of in a different context. So if you jump ahead a few questions, uh, on number five, It says, uh, for problems five through eight, find the exact values of the six trig functions, right? We've seen that before, of theta if it terminates in the given quadrant with the given value. So number five, it kind of gives a different setup. It says quadrant uh, two, and then it tells us that sine is four over five. All right. So uh, a couple things to remind you of. Uh, this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. And so it tells we want to be working in quadrant two. So we're working exclusively in this quadrant. And again, uh, this is quadrant three. And this is quadrant four. And um, so I'm just going to draw kind of an arbitrary triangle in there. Remember, it always butts up against the x-axis. And so my theta is going to be that reference angle that we talked about last Friday. So there's my triangle. And more specifically, it says that, um, I kind of miswrote this a little bit, sine of theta is four-fifths. So it actually gives us one of the six answers. But um, this guy's going to help us label our picture. Because remember that our bread and butter, guys, is that sine of theta is always opposite over hypotenuse. So that means that four has to be the opposite. And uh, five has to be the hypotenuse. So on my triangle, I'll use a different color to make it pop. But four is the opposite. Five is the hypotenuse. And so I got two of my sides and um, you know, if I if I jump right into it, cosecant is going to be five over four because it's just the reciprocal. But in order to find some of the other ones, I'm going to need to find the uh, the adjacent side. You know, I need to find. I'll put a question mark over here so you can see it. We need to find that. And what I know from the Pythagorean theorem 
is that question mark squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. If you've got uh, my little hint from the last example, there is a 3, 4, 5 triangle that might make an appearance. But what we have is question mark squared uh, plus 16 equals 25 minus 16 from both sides. And we got, you know, question mark squared equals 9. Uh, maybe you preferred like an X or something as opposed to a question mark. But long story short, that question mark, that unknown is going to be 3. So um, open your ears because this, this is the trickiest part of, of this whole thing. Um, I found that the side length is 3. This may be the trickiest part of this whole section. And so um, I want to just put a 3 over here. Bam. But you got to keep in mind, guys, that we're in quadrant 2. And if you were plotting like this point, kind of like the last example, because it's in quadrant 2, it's subtle, but that's going to be a negative because of the quadrant you're in, meaning that if you picked any point in this quadrant, it would have two plus signs. But when you have any point over here, think about plotting points, graphing equations, it's always a negative and then a positive. That adjacent side is going to be negative. We'll talk about that more in class, but just kind of know what's there and be careful with it. Whoop. All right, so um, here we go. Let's wrap this up. We got these two. But we also need to find uh, cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. That means that secant of theta is the reciprocal. We're making progress. Tangent of theta, toa, is opposite over hypot uh, excuse me, opposite over adjacent. And that means that cotangent of theta is the reciprocal. Once you have those side lengths, then you can start cranking out the exact values very quickly. Again, the hardest part is just realizing that in some of these quadrants, you're going to have different signs, meaning plus and minus signs. And so some of those details, um, I'd highly encourage you to check your answers in the back of the book. Uh, especially for the odd ones, just to make sure your, your plus and minuses and all the little details match up. So hopefully this helped a little bit. Thanks for your patience. Feel free to uh, uh, ask questions, put it in the comments or whatever, but I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.